Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we might as well cover this up and uh, rename myself Mr. Nismo, because today we've got a Nissan Maxima 2010 model year. Came in with a random multiple misfire P300, P0300 code, and just all around running poorly. Uh, scanned it, I'll put a clip in of it had lots of body control module codes and TPMS codes and unrelated stuff. The concern was get the thing running well. Uh, this car has 209,400 miles on it. I've been looking over it for the last three years off and on. It is a buddy of mine's uh, son's vehicle. Uh, so he's a younger guy and most likely has beat on it quite a bit. He said it started misfiring after uh, revving it up cold started. So uh, yeah, he does have an exhaust on it and he does drive it aggressively. So uh, gone through with some preliminary checks because this car does not support a misfire monitor. I don't have much data with the snap-on scanner on the Nissans. Uh, went ahead and pulled bank one coils because they're easy to get at. Bank two, we have to take the upper plenum off. Uh, he just drove it to me, it's still hot. I need it to cool down some before I pull the spark plugs out of this hot aluminum cylinder head. I wanted to go ahead and pull the coils for one reason, uh, mainly to check to see if a spark plug well seals were leaking. Nissan in their superior engineering made the cam covers polycarbonate and made the spark plug tube well seals into those cam covers. So if you have an issue, you don't just replace the seal, you replace the entire cam cover slash rocker cover slash valve cover. Brilliant Nissan. Luckily, they're only about $48, 50 bucks a piece, still aggravating. Uh, instead of replacing a seal, you replace the whole cam cover. Ridiculous. So looked at bank one, no oil down in the spark plug wells. So good on that. We don't have to worry about the cam covers. Uh, with the mileage, they've probably already been replaced once. Uh, I'll put in a video clip really quickly. I think I found the issue. Ignition coil number one, as you can see, is burnt slam up. Looks like the boot had, uh, had a small perforation in it and the ignition coil was arcing through the boot onto the cylinder head and burned that boot up. Uh, will we have a burnt coil on the back bank of cylinders? Not sure. I don't know if that was the entire issue or not, uh, but like I said, we're gonna let the engine cool down and get into this replacement and go over replacing these and how you have to take the upper plenum off. So quick recap here we're at so far. We pulled the engine cover off, which is uh, fairly simple to do. You have uh, two hex headed screws, hex headed bolts at the back, and then you have two rubber stoppers here. You take those two out. I believe they're a five millimeter hex and uh, you just pull the cover up uh, from there, the coil pack's on the front. You've got one electrical connector per coil pack. You've got one 10 millimeter headed bolt and they come right out. Easy peasy, nothing we really need to go over. So here is cylinder number one's coil. As you can see, it is very crusty, very burnt up. It has been arcing to the cylinder head and uh, most likely the main cause of our misfire, but uh, Seeing as how we got a P0300 rather than a P0301 for a cylinder one misfire, we've got a random misfire. There's likely more than one coil uh, that looks like this. But bank one, as I said, uh, this was the only coil that was bad with cylinder one, two and three, I mean, three and five look uh, pretty fine. Uh, again, I'm assuming this is one, three, five, and that's two, four, six on this Nissan. As far as I can tell, this is the furthest forward cylinder, so should be number one, uh, but not too familiar with Nissans. I don't work on them a ton, so if I got the cylinder numbering incorrectly, don't shoot me. So from here, we need to take the upper plenum off, which is the polycarbonate part of the intake manifold assembly. The aluminum intake manifold stays, just this upper plenum needs to come off so we can access cylinders two, four, and six. All right, so to start off, we're gonna go ahead and take the upper part of the air box off to the throttle body. Um, this hose clamp is where it's at. It should be here. Uh, this car had a new CVT installed by Nissan under warranty a while back. So it looks like uh, the Nissan techs barely put things back together, which is uh, kind of par for the course for uh, dealerships. So we've got our mass air connector up here, squeeze connector, pull that loose. Uh, we'll go ahead and squeeze the clamp here and push the electrical connector back off the upper part of the box. Let that flop back. Should be an eight millimeter for the hose clamp. Go ahead and work that loose. Go ahead and wiggle that. Looks like our 
intake boot is starting to get a split in it right before the clamp. So I got that. That should be everything holding this upper air box into place as far as I can see. Uh, say that, but we do have a hose down here, uh, likely a silencer or something. Uh, so that should be an eight as well. And pull this out and set it aside. We do get much clearer look at the back of the intake manifold now. We'll go ahead and take this connector, squeeze the sides of it, push it back through the bracket there at the throttle body. The throttle body is nasty. We're going to go ahead and clean that uh, before we put it back together. We will have to do an idle relearn on this VQ for that, or else it'll cause some surging in the idle. Go ahead and squeeze the connector here, disconnect the throttle body like so. Pull this silencer out, it wasn't attached. Looks like uh, there's a mount here that might have snapped off. Hopefully you can see here, we got coolant line one and coolant line two. Let's say we're gonna crimp these off, remove these hose clamps and pull them off of the throttle body just so we don't have to worry about a ton of coolant loss and don't have to worry about unbolting the throttle body and leaving it flopping and then having to procure a throttle body gasket. So we're just gonna come down here and use our crimp offs. Wish I had two of those baby ones, but we're gonna have to use a bigger one back here. just to block the flow of coolant. Take our hose clamp pliers and grab those spring-loaded hose clamps. Pull them down. Again, we are gonna lose some coolant, but uh, it's not gonna continue to bleed out with those uh, clamps there. Grab our hose gripping pliers. Just because these are gonna be good and stuck on here from age. Give a twist back and forth to break the seal between that rubber hose and that uh, steel or aluminum uh, nipple there. And we should be able to pull it down or push it down with the pliers. Sorry for blocking you guys' view. A little tight to get in here. Oh, didn't even drop. Drip a drop. It's a pretty good placement there. Not gonna be able to get a good grip that way. A little bit of coolant there, but only a couple drops. So, coolant lines are disconnected from the throttle body now and crimped off. Uh, we'll go ahead and. Uh, Start removing some of these solenoids and get them off of the intake next. Or the plenum, I keep saying intake. Just let those flop down. have to move them too far just uh, enough to get them free from the plenum so we can pull that plenum up um, so these hard lines I've got a hard line connection here I have to take the vacuum line loose there take the vacuum line loose there we've got a 10 here and here we can roll this uh, hard vacuum line set up back away from the plenum as well.
So now our hard lines are loose. Like I said, we need to go ahead and take these loose. Got to be extremely careful because these vacuum lines have seen better days. Uh, but, you know, yeah, it's just crumbling. Uh, we're going to have to replace these vacuum lines. They are not going to seal back up. They're just disintegrating as I try to remove them. But with 209,000 miles and likely all original from the factory, uh, they're past their life expectancy. There we go. No matter how gentle we are, they are going to crumble. These things can only take so many heat cycles before they are uh, useless. So carefully, I guess we're gonna take this electrical connector loose to give us a little bit more range of movement. And uh, slide that there. And then we'll rotate all of this backwards. Uh, hook that there. Hopefully that'll hold that out of our way. We might need to go get a, a bungee strap or something just to pull this back. It looks like we've got two vacuum hoses back here and uh, not much else actually. So looks like we're almost to the point of pulling this plenum off. So not going to be able to show you really well what I'm doing back here, but there is a hose clamp and a hose right here at this part of the intake. Let's reach in here for hose grip pliers after removing that. Break it free, wiggle it loose. Like so. Set that to the side. Then we got one more. Of course, the clamp is facing away from us because why would it face towards us and be easy? And uh, see if I can sneak my hand up back this way and grab it. But uh, if you see this one on top, you'll see the one behind it. It's right in line behind it. And that was aggravating. And it looks like we do have a support bracket back here for this intake manifold. Looks like possibly Feels like a 10 millimeter headed bolt. All right, got that bolt out. Looks like it's uh, actually holding the AC line. Doesn't look like it's actually supporting the intake manifold. Although it feels like there might be a bracket behind that. Ow! That's always good for the head. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my mirror and just make sure, but I think we've got everything disconnected now where we can unbolt the plenum and pull it up. All right, so now uh, we shouldn't need but to remove these 10 millimeter bolts and nut. And I think we're home free to pull this joker out of here. Those of you keeping time in uh, real world time, I would have already been completed a set of Subaru spark plugs. <laughs> At least on a four cylinder. H6 would be a little bit longer. So hopefully everything's loose now. If not, we're gonna test how strong it is when we rip this thing out of here.
Yeah, it looks like we've got one more thing holding us. Looks like we need to uh, come loose from this bracket here. So we'll take this evap line loose here and we will take it loose here at the metal barb nipple. believe we are now free. Be careful not to drop anything into the intake manifold. And there we go, plenum is off. All right, so now we can finally remove our rear ignition coils. All right, so electrical connectors, pop them loose. 10 millimeter headed bolts for the coils. And twist and pull our coils out. That one looks decently healthy. Uh, that one, there we go. There's our other coil that's burnt up. Oh, there's the oil. Man, I thought we were gonna get away with this. So, looks like we are gonna need to replace the cam cover on the back bank of cylinders. We are full of engine oil, as you hopefully can see from here. Just covered, gross. Uh, but really quickly, I can show you where this coil focus is burn up as well. Not as bad as cylinder one, but uh, stop moving focus is uh, burn up pretty good. So, yeah, we have two bad coils and uh, we've got an oil soaked coil. So, no es bueno. So, there's our oil soaked coil, as you see. I don't know why it didn't focus on me, but yeah, there we go. All right, guys, luckily Nissan Parts was open today and they had our new rocker cover, cam cover, in stock with the gasket. So we are not stuck. We can finish this job today. So first off, we need to get the oil out of this spark plug well. We're going to spray some brake parts cleaner down in there to help dissolve some of that oil. Then we're gonna take a blower, shop air, and uh, a rag, and uh, blow it right out of that hole. Of course, you wanna put a rag over top. You don't want it blowing everywhere. So sprayed a good amount of brake parts cleaner in there, and then we're gonna take our nozzle and uh, again, cover the hole. blow all that oil up into our rag. Repeat this process a couple times to get it all out of there. Because we do not want to take the spark plug out with that full of oil and it, you know, run down in the cylinder. So, like I said, I'm gonna do that probably two, three more times till the rest of it's out. And uh, once we got that cleaned out, we can go ahead and take these electrical connectors loose, get the harness off here, these hoses, and get this rocker cover up, or cam cover up, and uh, replace it. We wanna take and uh, blow around the cover because we don't want any of the trash, dirt, all that debris to get inside of the valve train once we take the cover off. All right, now we got that knocked out, we can go ahead and get this uh, wiring harness, harness out of the way. So we'll go ahead and unplug our cam sensors, intake, and exhaust, and roll that harness back. We're gonna have to uh, pull all these fuel injector harnesses loose as well. 
and uh, there's a couple little places where uh, the harness is tethered so to the uh, cam cover so just a little squeeze connector on the back side and you can fish it back through the hole pretty easy that's for our oxygen sensor a little correction from earlier looks like this rear bank is one three and five and the front bank is two four and six because this is further forward so that should be cylinder one so it looks like cylinder three and cylinder two were our burnt out coils and cylinder five was an oil soak coil go ahead and disconnect our fuel injectors might need a pair of pliers to get those Just take your time with these, they're gonna be brittle. You don't wanna break them off. It is extremely brittle. I'm afraid it's gonna break. If it does, we'll just zip tight in place. Yeah, I got it to pop up. So now we can pull this harness back towards the firewall. Again, being careful because it's old and brittle. And you can hear it creaking and popping. So basically everything is out of our way now. We can remove this cam cover. We've got four bolts top, four bolts bottom, one here and one here, 10 millimeter headed. Let's go ahead and take them loose and bust this joker off of here. All right, all our bolts are removed. We should be able to pop this up. We gotta be careful though. We're gonna have to tilt it back to clear these cam sensors. I don't think I've gotta remove the cam sensors, but I might be wrong. Actually, we got two more tins up here uh, by the cam sensors. Should be able to just pop it up now. Might be stuck a little bit from age. There we go. Shouldn't be prying with a hose pick, but didn't feel like going and grabbing a pry bar. Probably gonna have to grab one, maybe not. Would be advisable to remove them, but I didn't get the O-rings for them. Looks like we are gonna have to remove them. So, two more tins. I'd rather go ahead and remove them instead of worry about breaking them off. I don't think it matters their location, but we'll try to keep the intake and the exhaust separate and put them back where they came from. So that was our intake. And that was our exhaust. And now we should be able to just pick it right up out of here. Again, be careful, you don't want to drop anything down inside the valve train, dirt, etc. Dish that out. We're catching that PCV hose and part of the old gasket. Do a little bit of prep here. 
Um, we do need to squirt RTV silicone in the corners. And uh, I think that's it. I don't think there's any other location on this rocker cover that requires it other than the corners here. But uh, go ahead and grab some razor blades, brake park cleaner, clean rags, clean up, prep this surface for installation of the new cover. All right, so got all of this prepped and cleaned. Our RTV is gonna get squirted in these corners here by the cam carriers. And uh, that's basically it, other than putting the new gaskets in the new rocker cover, really quickly parts run down while we're here. Uh, this is the plenum gasket. Not OE, of course. Uh, these are the ignition coils. As far as I've looked in my research, the Hitachi coil should be the OE. Nissan discontinued their actual Nissan coils, which is odd. Uh, Denso spark plugs, that should be the correct. Iridium spark plugs, not 100% sure. Uh, again, limited information and limited knowledge of Nissan products compared to Subarus. So here is our cam cover, which is part number that. And then we've got the outer perimeter gasket for the cam cover and our cam sensor that goes in here, gasket, part number that, not, actually there's the part number, sorry about that. So, all right, new cam cover, we got the perimeter gasket installed, just goes into the little channel, and then we've got the double seal here. It's actually a one piece, but it's two little rings that go around those uh, cam sensors. So all ready to go. All right, now to apply our RTV in the corners, just gonna use some uh, regular old Permatex Ultra Gray. Just a little daub in each corner there by the cam carrier. just where we make that sharp angle to the cylinder head from that cam carrier. And you don't need a massive amount, just a good sized little dab should do. All right, now that's on there, we can carefully guide our cam cover back into place. Again, trying to avoid knocking any junk into the engine. You will need some downward pressure to get those uh, spark plug tubes to go through the new seals, they are kind of tight. And there we can tighten down our bolts, just snug them down. We do have to torque them. There's a procedure and a torque specification for how tight they need to be. And we're just gonna snug them down hand tight to start with. All right, first round, we're gonna torque them all to 26 inch pounds or three Newton meters. And we do have a particular pattern to follow. Oops, I was looking at the uh, loosening procedure there. So we're gonna torque them uh, crisscrossing out from the center. Good thing we're on step one. All right, 
X pattern from the center, then we'll hit the outers again. All right, second procedure, we go through and torque them all to 82 inch pounds or 9.25 Newton meters. Again, we'll start at the center and crisscross our way out to the outside. All right, and we are set. Valve cover, cam cover, rocker cover, whatever you want to call it, is set. So we can go ahead and reattach our wiring harness, our hoses, and go ahead with the regular spark plug replacement procedure. Go ahead and just snug up those uh, cam sensor bolts. I'm not sure of the actual torque spec, but uh, not a ton because it's uh, holding that little plastic tab of the sensor. And, uh, you know, it's not going to go anywhere, so just snug it up. Click and click. All right, hose back on. Like so. And we need to transfer over our PCV valve hose. Just like so. All right, now we can go through and put our wiring harness back in place. Here, everything positively clicks. Definitely don't want any of this stuff coming loose after the plenum's back on, having to take it all back apart. Don't forget our oxygen sensor. All right, so just our coils. Don't forget up here at the front. All right, got that, got that. At the rear, I think we're good. All right, so now we can start replacing these spark plugs, which they are 14 millimeter spark plugs rather than the conventional 16 millimeter spark plugs. Curious as to what they look like, 210,000 miles and unknown service history. And we know the coils are most likely factory and that's why they have now burnt themselves out. Uh, but curious on the spark plugs help condition. Super ate up. <laughs> These are Denso radium plugs. Hopefully I purchased the correct ones. And looks like it. It's a Denso FXE22HR11. So I ordered exactly what came out of it. Pre-gap plugs. So don't have to worry about gapping them, just check them, eyeball them, make sure that the gap's not closed up or damaged. And it can happen in shipping, although now most of these spark plugs that are pre-gapped come with the little protector uh, boots over the ends where you don't have to worry about that as much, uh, but it still can happen. So not seeing a torque spec on these, but most aluminum cylinder head spark plugs are torqued to about 21 Newton meters. So that's what we're gonna go with is 21 Newton meters installation torque. And there we go. If you don't want to torque them, don't have a torque wrench, you can tighten them up till they're snug and then quarter to a half turn usually is good. So one down, five to go. Not rocket surgery here. That one 
one appears to be wanting to be a struggle. Let's go get a longer ratchet. On aluminum cylinder heads, let them cool down because if you take out a hot spark plug out of a hot aluminum cylinder head, you're likely to pull some threads with you. I'm not liking the sound of that coming out. That is really tight. Likely, it's just been in there for too long. Let's hope that's all it is. Let's hope we're not pulling threads out of this uh, cylinder head. That'll make a, a very, 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 very bad day. And I do mean a very bad day. Oh yeah, nice and rusty. Looks like we had some water get in there. Go ahead and blow that out. Big old puff of rust. So, fun times. Hopefully that's tight enough. Hopefully that little bit of rust in the bore is not throwing us off. All right, we'll go ahead and throw our brand new Hitachi ignition coils in there. And uh, the front side will be buttoned up. Again, this is part number IGC0003. A little bit of dielectric grease in the tips of the boots is helpful, but not 100% required. And there we go. So I'll go ahead and just snug the coils down.
All right, now we can clean our throttle body, install the new upper plenum gasket, and reinstall the upper plenum and be done. All right, guys, old plenum gasket's out. Here's our new one. There's your part number, MS19419. Pretty quick and easy. Just slap it in the holes and uh, push it down. So make sure it's going the right way. <laughs> but yeah, fairly easy. Just line it up, gently press it into the grooves. And I uh, just finished cleaning the throttle body off camera. Just used a little nylon brush and some brake parts cleaner and a rag and uh, got that bore all cleaned up. Plenum gaskets on. Go ahead and pull this stuff back gently and uh, get ready to throw our plenum back on. We'll make sure that our surface up here is clean and we don't have any debris. All right. Now to fish this plenum back in here. Drop it on as such. Go ahead and run our bolts in. And the two outer nuts. Go ahead and tighten them by hand for final torquing. Okay, so don't quote me on this, but I think Torque is 11 Newton meters, or at least that's what I'm going to use, so. Hopefully we don't hear a crack. Let's work our way up to it. All right. And good. Now all we have to do is reattach all of our vacuum lines, reattach our brake booster vacuum line, our PCV hose, uh, throw these little solenoids up here on the plenum, tighten them back down. Go ahead and put this back, plug this back in. Throw that back up there, that's back up there in place. And click, click. Click, 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 and click. Now we need to get this hose clamp back in place. All right, so PCV hose to the back of the intake.
PCV hose. I mean, uh, brake booster hose. And uh, I reinstalled this little 10 millimeter bolt back here that I believe holds a power steering line. I don't think it was actually an AC line. All right, and that is tight. Go ahead and slide that hose back on. Go ahead and remove those clamps. Slide them on all the way. All right, coolant hoses are back on, clamps are back on. Let's go ahead and pop that wiring harness, throttle body electrical connector. And uh, we'll route this up here for when we get the air box in. The air filter back in the box. Ahead and slide our silencer tube back under here. Slide our air box back in place. Our silencer piece in, seated. Go ahead and tighten that eight millimeter hose clamp. that go ahead and reinstall this the first one might as well go ahead and just uh get the air box lined up and closed up Just like so. Mass air sensor connected, all that's good. Put this in here. In there. Like so. Slide our clamp down. Like so. Tighten this eight millimeter clamp back up. Which is not a factory part, by the way. Someone added that on. And uh, go ahead and tighten our, whoop, eight, middle, eight millimeter up here at our throttle body connection. And that is it, we should be set to go ahead and hook the scanner up, turn the ignition on, go through the throttle uh, relearn and start her up. So we'll go ahead and do that now. All right, cleared the codes. First start, sounds a lot better than it did. Not misfiring currently. Sounds like it's running on all six again. A Little bit rough idle, but uh, it's gotta figure out it's idle since I cleaned the throttle body. So we'll let it idle, get up to temperature. All right, guys, car is fully up to temperature, as you see. Running really smooth, idling where it should be. Does not look like we need to do the idle air volume learn procedure. Looks like it has uh, figured that out on its own. So it looks like this car is good to go back to the customer. Uh, they are going to need the TPMS sensor to get the TPMS light off. The ABS light is on because of that left front. ABS wheel speed sensor, as well as the VDC and traction. So still some more kinks to work out on this car. Sounds like it's got some timing chain rattle 
uh, these VQs, especially with 209,000 miles, uh, the guides start going and rattling on them. So that might be something they need to look at sooner than later is uh, the timing guides and perhaps the tensioners, a job that I will not be taking because I do not want to mess with timing chains on a VQ, especially in a front wheel drive application. All right, and that will do it for the video on this misfiring 2010 Nissan Maximo for VQ35 V6. Burn up coils, old spark plugs, and a leaking rear cam cover and had this thing running horrible. Again, I wish I got in a video clip of it when it came in earlier today. It sounded really bad, chugging along, probably only running on four cylinders, but uh, sounds really good now, ready to, to return it to the customer. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.